Mattel just gave the Bulls a whole lot of fodder to play with. The Toymaker reported its best fourth quarter sales growth rate in 15 years. Sales gained 10 percent, marking the second straight quarter of double digit growth for the company. Profit margin soared and Mattel offered an upbeat outlook for 2021. Joining us now is Mattel CEO Inan Kreis. Inan, good to see you again here. Uh, we, we've talked to a few in the toy industry uh, over the past couple of weeks, and, and they say momentum in their business has continued from really a, a strong holiday season. Have you seen that in your business? Yeah, well, Brian, as you said, this was a very strong quarter for us. Uh, our best performance in years with strong demand by consumers and another milestone year for Mattel. Uh, for the second quarter in a row, we achieved double digit sales growth and grew ahead of the industry and continue to gain market share. Our results exceeded expectations and we also managed to increase our profitability and grow our operating income by more than two and a half times relative to last year. But this is not just about the quarter or the year. It's about a multi-year strategy that is progressing very well, which puts us in an excellent position to continue to increase profitability and accelerate our growth this year and beyond. And as you said, momentum continues. Uh, we had a strong third quarter, a strong fourth quarter, and overall, a um, uh, very strong end of, of a year and a good start in, um, uh, in 21. So what are folks buying? Well, uh, we have a very large uh, portfolio. Um, the highest um, uh, driver, of course, is Barbie, which continues to go from strength to strength. Barbie retail sales were up 30 percent in the fourth quarter. Uh, and Barbie, as you know, uh, finished as the number one overall toy property globally, both in the fourth quarter and the full year. Uh, our adults portfolio as a whole continues to perform very well. American Girl was up 9% in the quarter. It was the first quarter of growth in four years. So we're seeing renewed momentum. And this is in spite of COVID retail related disruptions. Our vehicles uh, category also grew by double digit, with Hot Wheels continue to perform so well. The Hot Wheels single assortment was the number one toy sold globally uh, for, the, in, in, for the full year in terms of number of items. And the, the, uh, the brand achieved its third consecutive year of record gross uh, sales. So very strong momentum for, uh, uh, in our vehicles category. And likewise, we're seeing really good momentum continuing with our games category that had its eighth consecutive quarter of year-over-year -year growth, with Uno being the number one item um, sold in the games and puzzles category globally for the year, based on number of units. So uh, momentum across the board. And of course, um, we did really well in our building sets category, our plush category that was just a white space for us a year ago. And we ended the year with the number one item in the category. And Fisher Price achieved growth for the first time in four years, up 11 percent, up double digit in the quarter. So I would say, you know, this was a quarter where we saw growth in every region in constant currency, in each of our power brands, and in the four categories that we report um, as a whole. So very strong momentum, and uh, we're very encouraged by that uh, performance. Let's go back to Barbie. Uh, we've talked about it in the past, but the fact that you are now making more diver diverse dolls, you know, I've seen recently now you are going to be coming out with Ken dolls uh, in with Ken sitting in a, in a wheelchair. That push to diverse your dolls, has that changed a longer term growth uh, trajectory of the Barbie business? You know, the, uh, the story of Barbie really is a multi-year uh, multi journey. It's about diversity, inclusivity, um, ethnicity, uh, evolving body, uh, body shapes, and, and, and purposeful play. Um, but, you know, in talking about Barbie, you need to really understand that this is about the Mattel playbook. Uh, without taking anything away from the incredible success of Barbie, which we're so proud of, it is about the same approach, the same methodology, the same capabilities, the same authenticity uh, that are being applied across our product offering. Uh, it's about brand purpose, design-led innovation, cultural relevance, and executional excellence. We have our category structure and centralized design and development organization that are filled with extraordinary talent that are working as a team across the entire portfolio, leveraging skill sets and creativity across all brands. 
which is why we're so confident about our growth trajectory across the portfolio, leveraging the Mattel playbook and staying, uh, you know, authentic and focused on our mission and purpose as a company. Uh, and this is working really well. And, and, and what is behind the success of Barbie, Barbie is ahead um, of, of uh, our other brands, but this is where we're heading as a company. And you're also continuing to push into the content sphere. And, and apologies if I, if I pronounce this name wrong. You signed a deal with Lil Yachty. And I guess I'm showing my, my age there. I hope I got it right. Uh, how big a comp, how big of a, a movie or a piece of content, how much could that financially move the needle for Mattel this year when that comes out? No, we own one of the strongest catalogs of children and family entertainment franchises in the world. And the opportunity that we see in the mid to long term is to extend our great catalog outside of the toy aisles. We have a lot of potential and upside opportunity as a, on the toy side of the business, but we see incremental opportunity to extend our brands in highly accretive business verticals that are directly adjacent to the toy industry, that are driven by big brands, big trusted brands that people know, that have a relationship with, and are drawn to them. So. We've announced uh, the UNO uh, live action uh, motion picture recently, as we said, uh, but that, this is the 11th project we announced um, in, under the Mattel film banner, and there's more coming. And in addition, we also are making a lot of progress with Mattel television. We have 17 shows or, or series or projects or specials in production and more than 25 projects in development. So. There's a lot of activity around our brands. And in today's world, in a world of unlimited uh, shelf space with the growth and proliferation of distribution platforms, everyone is looking for big brands, big intellectual property that rise above the noise level. And this is what we have. And in success, this, this will be transformative for the company uh, because there's a lot of opportunities for us to reimagine uh, and engage with consumers, with our content, with our brands. And we're very excited with the progress we're seeing so far in terms of interest and, um, and the partnership that we have with some of the best creators, some of the best filmmakers of, of our generation. You know, how do you think COVID, uh, the COVID-19, the pandemic, how do you think it has changed Mattel? And and once we do go back out and venture out into the wild and maybe go to the movies, go shopping a bit more, how do you think that will impact your business? Well, there's no question that the COVID lockdown drove strong consumer demand for toys. Uh, last year, uh, 2020 ended up being um, a very strong year for the, for the toy industry as a whole. Uh, but you know, the way we see it is that much of our overall performance our success that we talked about has been driven by the work of our organization and by the strength of our own brands and the quality of our products. We did not just ride the wave. We outpaced the industry and gained share on a global basis in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, and the full year. In the US, our growth rate uh, in the fourth quarter was 30% ahead of the industry. In Europe, our growth rate was five times faster than the industry. And in Latin America, we gain market share in the quarter uh, and for the full year and continue to extend our leadership position. So, you know, we are doing what we are supposed to do. We're growing ahead of the industry. We believe the categories where we are global leaders, dolls, vehicles, and infant toddler preschool will continue to perform well beyond the pandemic. The, we actually, these categories did not get as much of a lift during the pandemic. We drove growth but it was less so from the pandemic itself. And we accept, uh, expect to accelerate uh, our growth within these categories and increase our overall market share. Beyond 2021, uh, we believe that in the long-term growth prospects of the industry as a whole, uh, given the strong fundamentals, the industry proved that it's a strategic category for retailers, it's, it's, uh, it's uh, recession uh, resilient, and it, really highlighted the importance of play. And with that, we think the industry has met, you know, a lot of uh, room to grow. Uh, it's a growth industry, and we are well positioned to accelerate our own growth and, and grow our market share within that environment. 
All right, let's leave it there. Mattel CEO, Enon Kreis, always good to see you. Good to see what you're doing on the Barbie front. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you, Brian.